This is Tara Carr from the University of Arizona presenting who should be targeted for treatment with biologic therapy. Severe asthma is defined as asthma, which requires treatment with guideline suggested medications, including high dose inhaled corticosteroids and long acting beta agonists for the previous year, or which requires systemic corticosteroids to prevent it from becoming uncontrolled or which remains uncontrolled despite this therapy. And uncontrolled asthma can be determined by poor control using the questionnaires, such as the asthma control test and the asthma control questionnaire. It can be identified as patients who require more than two courses of steroids for exacerbations. It can be identified as serious exacerbations, like requiring hospitalization or intubation, or patients who have persistent airflow limitation, like an FEV1 less than 80% of predictive. For patients who have asthma, which seems to be severe, it's important to determine that you're actually dealing with severe asthma because there are other things that can contribute to asthma being uncontrolled. So confirm the diagnosis of asthma, including identifying potential differential diagnoses like COPD or bronchiectasis. Look for factors which can contribute to poor symptom control or frequent exacerbations, including incorrect inhaler technique, flow adherence to inhalers, comorbidities, including obesity, reflux, chronic sinusitis or sleep apnea, and other modifiable risk factors, including smoking, environmental exposures, pets, and medications. Identify patients who are overusing their short-acting beta agonist reliever medications, and look for patients who have comorbid anxiety, depression, or social difficulties that might be affecting their asthma treatment and control. Make sure that you're optimizing the patient's asthma management including educating about the appropriate way to use inhalers and inhaler technique and treat the modifiable comorbidities and risk factors. Consider adding on non-biologic therapies, including long-acting beta agonists, long-acting muscarinic antagonists, leukotriene antagonists, and medications like azithromycin for control of asthma. Smoking cessation may be particularly important because smoke exposures both contribute to asthma onset and progression, but also impair response to medications such as inhaled corticosteroids. Patients who are obese may have significantly worsened asthma related to their obesity, so weight loss programs and interventions can be particularly helpful for these patients. For individuals whose asthma remains still uncontrolled despite use of these medications regularly with good compliance and good technique and with risk factor modification, it's important to consider adding a biologic therapy for treatment of the severe asthma. We're determining which therapy is appropriate for the patient. We usually send biomarkers such as serum IgE, serum eosinophils, and assess for things like nitric oxide levels. The GINA guidelines provide recommendations for how to approach patients with evidence of type 2 airway inflammation in severe asthma and will recommend starting anti-IgE therapy if the patient is greater than six years of age and has evidence of severe allergic asthma as evidenced by specific IgEs, elevated total IgEs, and the presence of exacerbations. GINA guidelines recommend using an anti-IL-5 or anti-IL-5 receptor antibody if the patient has evidence of severe eosinophilic asthma, including exacerbations. And the GINA guidelines recommend starting an anti-IL-4 therapy for patients who have severe eosinophilic asthma or who need maintenance oral corticosteroids who have also had exacerbations. After starting a biologic agent, it's recommended to reassess the individual monthly or at least after three months to determine whether the medication has seemed to benefit the patient. Benefits can include day-to-day -day symptom control, reduction in exacerbations, or improvement in lung function. If the biologic therapy has seemed to help, then we usually continue the medication. If the biologic therapy is not working, then it would be worth considering alternative agents. Ongoing assessment of severe asthma is extremely important to identify new risk factors and comorbidities that may be complicating the disease, as well as to utilize novel therapies that may become available that are more effective for each patient.